well, this is Betty 2. We're in Keyhaven. We're about to go for a sail to Yarmouth. It's a lovely day. The wind's blowing from the east, which is unusual. They're saying between 12 and 17 knots, which should give us a good race for our money. Um, Betty 2, as you can see, a cosy little cabin, very low profile, boat built in 1921 in Essex. She has a centre plate, which I'm sitting on. Um, we have obviously a gaff rig, so that's a four-sided sail. Two sails up front, what's called the jib, which is the one right at the front, and then the staysail. And this is perfect conditions for sailing in what is called a gaff cut. Doesn't mean to say though that she doesn't have um, a little bit of leakage because all wooden boats do, especially when they work, because the planks ever so slightly slide when you're going through rough water or you're sailing hard and the mast is pushing down on the base of the of the keelson so you everything stretches and flexes and so you get a bit of water in them which is fine um, some people are alarmed about that but i know enough about boats not to be worried about that so what can i say she's very low profile as you can see i can't stand up but we've got these two lovely bunks so when i go sailing with my wife or with a friend it's very comfortable to sleep in you can sit and have a chat. You certainly can sit here and have a glass of wine with four people. We keep all our all our stuff in boxes, so it's easy to, to access. So in here I've got all my necessary um, plates, forks, mugs, whatever. We have a little cooker which we pull out, which we kind of set up in here if it's calm, or we set it up in the cockpit. We have a cockpit tent which means that we can have two more people sleeping in the cockpit. I have had children and my daughters slept out there. All you need is a, a lilo, which you inflate. We've had people sleeping up here. We've actually had five people on this boat sleeping one night. And it's okay, not a thing for long cruises down channel, although I have used her for that. I'm very happy with the basics. Um, but she's a low profile boat because that makes her better to windward. She tends to be wet when it's when it's uh, rough. We get a lot of water coming, splashing over the bow, but she runs down, the water runs down the sides and the cockpit never gets any water in it, although it does get quite a lot of spray in it when, uh, when, there's, when there's a lot of waves around. But uh, all, this all stays very dry in here and cozy. Well, was it a... Was it a gaff boat that you were actually looking for? Yes, that's the thing about gaff boats is that they are very powerful um, boats to sail and they seem to be, to me, much less nervous. I find that, I find, my, I sail many dinghies. I used to have a, I used to have a shearwater catamaran as a kid. I used to sail Merlin rockets, I sailed lasers, etc. So it's not that I'm a, uh, an old fuddy daddy, but it's a very different feel to a, a, an old-fashioned wooden gaffer, which I've not found in any modern design boat with a, with a Bermuda rig. Um, you've, got, you've got a big sail, which means when you're across the winds, you've got a lot of power. A much more relaxed sail. I don't know why that is, but all my experience of gaffers is they're much less twitchy. Um, I like the idea of having, it's a cutter rig, so it's got a, both a jib and a staysail, which when you're sailing to windward, I think it looks just like this. I like the look of it. I have to say I'm a bit taken by the whole aesthetics of, of gaffers. Um, but, I, you know, I'm not close to, and I'm sure when I've, uh, they are difficult to sail because there's a lot of hard work and a lot of muscle needed. I've got no winches, so it's all done old-fashioned block and tackle which means that you have to be able to pull and push uh, with, with your arms and that sometimes um, stymies people who aren't used to, to doing that. But uh, I, think you, I think you get, this boat's got spirit, it's wood, it's got uh, its own motion, it's, it's unique. People ask me what make is it and I say it's a one-off. Um, it's made of lovely Pitch pine, uh, oak, oak, oak frames, pitch pine, planking. This is amazing wood, it lasts forever. It's got a, a resinous feel to it. If you try and drill into this wood, 
with a with a drill. It's all it's like oak, it's very hard and very fibrous. And I kind of admire that. It's a, you know, nature and uh, the fact that you know it's been made into this beautiful sailing vessel is something which appeals to me. And so it's it's just the gaff, it's not just the gaff, it's the wood as well that matches to me. Well I've had her 15 years and um, it's taken me that long really to feel completely at ease with her, I think. I still think people often say about old boats, you're always learning. And she's got a lot of ropes, like all gaffers. She's got backstays, she's got the stay sail sheets, the jib sheets. And if you're on your own, you have to release all those when you go about. That's three things to release, and then three things to pull in on the other side, or one's going to be put on this side, the other. So when you get to know the boat well, stop making the silly little errors but I still do things get things get caught up in the ropes and so on but uh, yeah it, it's I've had it long enough now to feel very much part of her and very much at ease and you know sending her across the channel as I did last summer it was really kind of a companionship thing really I did have somebody come with me but I came back alone and you just feel like she's a friend and she is a very friendly boat very user friendly they say don't they some boats look after you well I think Betty 2 does she looks after you it's quite remarkable how if you let go of all the sails in a rough sea and furl the jib and staysail and because you want to reef the main so you've got to stop she'll just sit there slightly head to wind completely calm in the water. This is heavy, so she doesn't chop around like a modern plastic boat. She kind of is this gen gentle motion, which you can only get with heavy wooden boats, in my experience. She's not flighty. Um, it takes a bit of time to wind up when she's sailing as well. So for me, it's a lovely boat because she's small, but has a feel slightly of a big boat. And she's got this large cockpit. She's open plan. There's no um, clutter in there apart from the stuff I take so it's very primitive and there's something something about that primitiveness that I find very attractive she's she's 25 foot along the full length what they call length overall and she's 23 foot at the waterline a bit, a bit more than that and then she's got a five foot bow sprit so when I'm asked how much space do you need in the marina to pay, I usually say she's 25 foot. But actually, if I was honest, you, you need a bit more for the bowsprit. You can bring the bowsprit in, and a lot of a lot of my friends do. Um, when you go in the harbour, you just you knock out the pin and she'll slide in. But uh, so that's and then the mast is about 25 foot as well. So not a very tall mast compared to modern boats because you don't need that extra bit at the top because you've got the gaff. Um, she has a top sail which at the moment is on a bamboo top sail yard which all my friends laugh at but it's very light and I've got her off an old uh, somebody who had it in their back garage used to be for rolling up the carpet so it's good, uh, a good uh, cheap and light piece of uh, material. And then I have various other sails for racing. We have a big, got something we call a Jenica, which um, means we go very fast downwind, which we're racing, we're always, it's always very important. And is this your boat for life then, Ben? Well, I don't know about what boat for life, because there's gonna become a point where my hands and my arms are gonna not be able to pull in the, jib sheets and so on, but uh, it's certainly close to that, yes, I think so. I, I don't know what I'll do when she goes, so that'll be a challenge, yes, so yes, boat for life is perhaps the right word.